G'day again. Um, thought I'd just uh, cover off a uh, fault that I've just been tracing through this afternoon on this SSL 6000 I've got here. It's uh, been an interesting one. A uh, month or so ago I was just using the monitor section of it and uh, it had been on all day, probably 12-14 hours, with no issue at all. I'd been doing some video editing, which is why I was just using the monitor section. And uh, anyway, I was just doing the last final little thing for the day and then the audio cut out. And there was some funny it's difficult to describe but some really weird kind of well fault condition type sounds uh the vu meters uh the main left and right and the mono meter just went pretty wild and without any real um um you know method or or, or reason to it they were just up and down and all over the place and it was really strange and the phase meter was moving around in a real weird way as well um but the um the interesting thing was is almost instantly i could smell burning semiconductor and I saw the tiniest little whiff of smoke uh, come up out of the uh, monitor section or the master section, center section, whatever you want to call it. Um, couldn't pick where it came from. It was the faintest little bit, but it was, and it was literally as I was getting up to go and shut the console off. So I was literally running out the door to go and hit the power supply and shut it down. Um, so, so I shut down um, and, um, and I kind of left it. It was late, it was like 10 o'clock at night. So it's like, right, I'll get back to that later. Anyway, roughly, Geez, it would be probably five weeks later. Um, I've not really been using the console. Um, well, I've still got to fix all of the issues with the channels and so on, but the uh, the center section or monitor section has pretty much been just getting used literally for monitoring while I've been doing a, uh, a very large uh, video editing project. But um, anyway, around that time, I had already ordered um, one of the um, new SSL. Well, it's not so new, but one of the uh, little um, two-channel interfaces which I have to say is an absolutely brilliant little interface it just does exactly what I want exactly how I want and it's few little features that are different to your typical two channel interfaces is, is um is just brilliant and it's just little things like um having being able to switch uh phantom on and off on each channel not uh, not globally or both channels um and a separate line and high impedance switch on each channel as well which is something you don't typically get and the uh the 4k emulation feature on it is, uh, is pretty interesting as well. Some people would like it, some people don't. I kind of like it. I've been doing some ADR or additional dialogue recording for a film production. And, um, and, and for the type of film that it is, it, it tends to work. That, uh, that little bit of brightness uh, that, it, uh, that it throws in uh, kind of works, and uh, particularly with uh, the actress that I'm, that I'm working with. Anyway, the, I've, uh, today I've had a couple of hours spare, so I decided to delve into the, uh, this fault that's going on in the, in the monitor section. And uh, traced the applied a 1K test tone to um, the uh, stereo input number one on the auxiliary inputs, and uh, which is what I've been using for um, for the input on the on the monitor source on the monitor section, and uh, and traced through the circuit. So I've had the uh, trusty old oscilloscope from the early 70s uh, going on, and um, uh, had the manual open on the uh, on the that's my door screen. And uh, a couple of extender cards in for the uh, particular boards that I've been tracing through. Anyway, the fault, I thought the fault was on the 82B22 card. This is a B22 card, not an E22 card. And uh, from what I can find in, in my research, the B22 card, and correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I can see, the B22 card is something that's specific to the 6000 series console. It's, uh, it's a little bit different. Um, I did find a second hand one on eBay. This is the original one that was in it. It has the uh, these two op-amp sections removed, these two here, and they relate to rear, uh, rear left, sorry, back left, back right, um, and a couple of other parts missing. But it's also been extensively modified um, over um, over the course of its life and and a few. Uh, it's had a few faults as well. When I've I've had one fault on it, which um, I did a bit of a. You could, it's not a dodgy repair, but it's not how I really like to do things. It was the logic side of the mini switch was locking on, so you'd activate that and it would stay on. You couldn't release it. What was happening is the logic side was being held high, so um, I literally just put a one K five resistor in parallel with the. I think it's a four. 4K7 resistor is the original one from memory. That's months ago. Anyway, um, and that that pulled down that logic line enough to release it. Weird fault. 
one of those things that I never got around to delving into. So that's now a spare card. And I found this pristine, unmolested, unmodified, original card. And I think it's one revision later than the original one. Anyway, it, it works fine. So um, I actually thought the fault was on that, which is why I bought that card. But it turns out the fault is actually on this 82E23 card. Now, it was an interesting little fault, and it took quite a bit to track it down to this circuit. In the center of this op amp I see, there is a tiny little heat mark, and leading away from that heat mark is a crack that goes all the way around the end, between pins 1 and 8, and about to the same distance in on the bottom. Anyway, so that op amp has obviously had a failure. You can see the little burn mark there. Um, this op amp's obviously had a failure, and in doing so, the, uh, the smoke that got out was either from this, but I doubt it, but these two resistors here, which are 10 ohm resistors, the originals, they're over on my bench over there, they're, they're burnt to a crisp. Um, they completely carked it. Now they're in series with the plus and minus 18 volt rails that come into this particular card. So you're probably wondering, why have I got two resistors in parallel to replace each one of those? The only reason I did that, these are quarter, quarter watt resistors. I decided I, I would prefer to have something a little bit meatier in there. So that's literally a pair of 20 ohm resistors in parallel to give me my 10 ohm resistance that I need and effectively giving me a half watt uh, resistor in that circuit just to give it a little bit of heat headroom. I've now been running the console for about an hour since I repaired it and these things are still dead cold. And the op amp that I replaced, which is this one, is also dead cold. So, um, well it's warm but it's fine. So it's all good. So um, anyway, I've been test testing it. It's uh, still open, running off the extender card. Everything is um, Everything is now working. It's been passing audio, test tone, whatever you want, and I haven't had an issue. So this is a repair. So the monitor section is now back up and running. Everything's good there. I'll get it all buttoned up and back together again. And then I'll um, uh, start working on the other faults through the, the channels and start getting the console commissioned and ready to use. Bye.